Hi guys, how's it going? In the last video we managed to uh, prepare our view where we can play the game. The game view, the game index uh, method is going, game control index method is going to present as this view which is pages.game. Now in this video we'll continue to build our application and what we're trying to do in this video is essentially um, when we click on an image we are trying to submit a response to the controller method update and then in return update is going to uh, calculate the new rank using the algorithm and it's going to save in the database let's open up our controller here in our controller first thing we need to do is basically here we need to pass the, the request the request that's coming from the from the view is this global super global uh, request object and we're going to say here let's just say request and I'm gonna pass in a request variable a type it's type type is request and variable name will be request as well and let's just die and dump and see what's inside this like so and uh, once we go back to our here I don't think it's going to do anything right now the reason is because if we go to our view which is game view here. What we have essentially done is we have um, a form. So basically, we have a, a, an image which is wrapped inside an anchor tag. And the anchor tag has a class called pick option. And it's actually, of course, uh, not submitting to anything, not taking us to anything. So basically, this won't work right now. It won't. This, this click won't work. So we have to use a little bit of jQuery here and target this class. So we'll, we'll say when this selector is uh, clicked, then we're gonna fire an event. We're gonna attach an event handler that uh, basically going to submit this form. Yeah, that's what we're trying to say. So we can write some script here. Let's go back to our all.js or scripts file. Now, if you manage to download, uh, if you have been following along, you'll notice that in one of the videos on in my previous videos, um, basically we have this um, the GitHub repo, repo I have updated. So what? What essentially it means is um, the previous file, previous GitHub, GitHub repo may not have that scripts dot uh, partials dot script file here. Partials. This partials folder was updated recently. So prior to this video, I think last video or last last video, I mentioned that. But just in case, if you have come to this video, like you have jumped a couple of things. That's okay if you if you don't want to get into other things. Just want to know what's going on in this video is the, is the only thing you care about. Just make sure you have these two files. And this scripts.blade has all the jQuery written for you. And we're going to discuss what we're trying to do here. And you can write your own jQuery. All you want to do is basically toggle some classes and some form. That's all you want to do. So this is referencing our uh, asset, which is all.js, which is in the public folder all.js this is bootstrap file style you don't need this actually you can get rid of that and then it references jQuery the jQuery is already embedded in this but if the jQuery is not loaded um, once the DOM is ready then if window.jQuery window.jQuery or document.write this if the window has jQuery object otherwise load the jQuery and window dot um, modernizer otherwise uh, upload this modernizer script for I think Internet Explorer or something and in here we don't need this shit this was essentially I was trying to do something else but basically the, I was trying to use some plugin so we can get rid of this and all we worry about right now is this bit of the code this bit of code targets pick option selector and what we try to do here is open it side by side so we can go view and we can go to layout two columns and I can move it here and here I can just hide the sidebar for now give us a little bit more space 
and so what it does is essentially whenever an anchor tag with a class of pick option is clicked I'm gonna uh, attach an event loader say event dot prevent default so don't do default action and what I want to do is find the parents this dot parents form first dot submit submit the form with which whichever button is clicked so if you click this button which is uh, not sorry this anchor tag with a class of pick option or you click this anchor tag with a class of pick option which is the, which is the right div this is the left div make sure to keep the IDs absolutely like this if you want to change something something else then that's okay you can just change the IDs here left and right to whatever IDs you use but make sure to place left and right for now left image and right image so whenever this anchor tag with the pick option is clicked I want you to find the uh, form in its parents first and then submit so it's going to go up in its tree and look for this form tag and it's going to find the first one and then submit it and also I want you to toggle these classes which is bounce in left change it to bounce it bounce out right toggle them which means bounce in left is in case of the left div with an ID of left it's going to toggle to bounce out right after it's been clicked and then in this case it's going to it's a, this is bouncing right it's going to bounce out left and that's all to is and close it and we'll go back to our single pane single and here we'll start we'll show some show the height sidebar so that's all it does the script now because the script is working the script is there so essentially it should work but then it, it doesn't work the reason is let's go back here um, here so looks like we'll, we're gonna have to do some uh, debugging here so document dot ready I'm gonna log let's make sure this is being uh, being fired or this is being used so we'll go go here we'll open up our um, developer tools view console and then let's bring bring it here and then when we refresh it should give it give us DOM loaded so the script is running so basically I can just place it here that way I can work side by side and uh, so that's good and what if let's keep it this way and here I'm gonna say button click it's not really a button but just some kind of message you know it looks like it's firing now as you did notice it just submitted to the um, to the controller so it was working in, in fact so we're gonna refresh it okay it looks like it's working so that's fine let's just um, give it a little bit more space and so it says it does, it, it's not able to find it because it, it hasn't been imported okay I don't like it so I'm gonna have to remove and I'm gonna have to remove okay sorry about that so this it's not importing here it's not able to import the class so what I'm gonna do is basically I'm gonna import like probably manually um, let's let's try f9 or f10 over that f10 so it's doing some code intel for php so just hang on it's going to find out in a minute and then request.php so these are the classes that uh, basically are there so it's probably this one so I'm going to copy that this one here Mm, what's going on here a little bit out of proportion huh? okay good 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 so get rid of this 
and then just put it here as and that should be that should be okay let's go back and refresh what we're trying to see here is developer to okay get rid of this this I want to refresh I want to see I want to just dump so there's a, of course I must have game controller line number six I must have done something stupid here so you can't say use class of course uh, sorry about that and then submit again so here we have the whole request it's a patch request because we are updating the column we're not adding a new sort of column or something and then it has it's firing um, it, it has this uh, token and that's nothing that's all something else let's go back to here um, server parameter bag and closer so far parameters and, and model of the session so whole holy shit look it's all the information is here you can make good use of this information and the, all the HTTP headers are here so that's amazing okay so this is what we are looking for so what we are looking for is basically type of method the token CSRF token which will be validated automatically the Laravel will take care of that for us because we're not doing Ajax so we don't need to worry about that but we're submitting direct HTTP request to the PHP file all you want to know is winner and loser I'm gonna go back I'm gonna click on the right image and that gives me another um, set of values which is 71 and 53 so previously it was 53 and 71 remember so it's working it's good I like it that's good let's go back to our controller method and let's get rid of you go away I don't need you so we have the, the the request get rid of this go away now what we want to do here essentially is let's set up a couple of variables so it doesn't matter you click on left image or right image whichever image we click is going to be the winner so winner and I'm going to call it uh, basically let's pull up the whole row for a particular image so in image I would like to query and let's query the first result now the query is going to be where ID is equal to uh, let's just say request winner because we have set uh, these uh, form the input name names of the fields game view in the game view which is game view here so we've got hidden input hidden winner and loser the winner is going to be the first image on the left side but the winner is going to be the this last image on the on the right side left side is first right side is last that's just we explained we discussed in the last video it's pretty simple um, so whoever is the winner whether we click left side or right side is going to query the database and store the, the row in this winner uh, variable and I'm going to create another one which is going to be loser and then it's going to be loser now we have both winner and loser all the uh, fields the values the current value is stored in these variables so the very first thing we're going to do is for the winner we are going to add the number of wins which is going to be winner wins plus one let's increase it by one uh, I'm going to open up the SQL Pro to explain to you what's going on here just give me a second I uh, should have opened before but sorry about that it won't take too long so what SQL Pro what, what I want to show you is the current structure of the database and for the images table and in the images table here if you go images you'll see that we have number of wins and number of losses so we want to well we started with zero because we haven't played any games with the but with the first game what we're trying to say whatever is the current number of wins add one to it or basically increase it by one and then for the loss for the losses we wanna losses plus one as well but we'll come back to losses in a minute let's just focus here now according to our algorithm which is in the model let's go back to the model 
we want to calculate the expected score the, according to the algorithm using this formula then we want to calculate the new winning score and for the loser we want to calculate the new uh, uh, score for the losses you know from, from the expectation and then we want to establish the rank which is pretty simple so what we'll do here is calculate the winner expected first So this is going to be the winner expected score which is going to take into consideration the expected um, expect, expected um, algorithm function which requires two parameters so if you are calculating for the winner so the winner variable has to come last and loser variable has to come first so we're going to say loser current score of the loser and current score of the winner that's going to give us the winners expected score and then we want to calculate winners new score it's going to be the new score here which is going to be win that's what we call our function here the name of the function is going to be uh, win I could probably improve the naming of these functions a bit better so we can call it I mean I can make it winner new score gonna be a little, little bit long you know just made it win and lost that's fine as long as you understand that's okay so I'm gonna say win now that what that requires is is that signature requires the fun method signature requires um, the current score if you're using winner then winner score if you're using uh, for the loss you loser score and the expected uh, score and the constant constant is already set so we're going to provide here winner score and then we're going to provide here winner expected score let's just copy and paste that's going to give us the um, the new score for the winner and Is that correct? Because if it has won, let's say, 10 games, so from the database we'll get ah, we'll get the score, and then we'll calculate if it has played one game, and then expectation is going to uh, be less than one, of course, and then we are going to multiply the constant. That's good. That's good. That's good. I just kind of forgot about the algorithm um, a little bit. So that's the new score. And then we are going to calculate the rank, which is going to be winner's winner rank. And we are going to use here a static method called rank, and that requires three things, I think. So it requires it requires winner, a new score, and it requires losses and wins so it requires basically the score which is going to be the current score and requires losses and wins and then it's going to return um, this rank round it round it round it will be rounded to the nearest digit so that's the shit we do for the for the winner and then we're gonna do the same thing for the loser I'm just gonna copy this whole thing come back here so for the loser we want to update here loser losses plus one and then it's going to be here loser 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 and loser and loser here and loser here and loser here and of course here and here and here here we're going to, going to give a winner score because if you're calculating score again expected score for the loser it's going to be the second argument the first is going to be the winner so we're going to subtract from winner to the loser like, like it says here 
if you're calculating for player A, the player A has to come, rating of player A has to come second, and the first is player B, so you can subtract it. It doesn't matter which one is lower, it's just going to come out correct in the end. Because it's really not, um, it's basically, base value is 10 raised to the power of this, it's something something else, it's not a straight mathematics. But anyway, so that's going to give us the set, of the, set, set us all the variables. Now what we have to do essentially is update the database. So we are going to update here, winner, and we're going to say here update, and we're going to pass in an array of values. The values are essentially going to be score, winner, score, and if this one is going to be wins, this one is going to be ranked because winner is only uh, going to talk about wins. When the winner becomes loser, then we're going to talk about the losses. And here we're going to talk about, we're going to say just what, what did we call our, um, we called wins. Wins is equal to winner wins plus one, so that's going to be wins. And then new score is going to be new score. And then rank is going to be rank. So we're going to call this one rank. And that's it. That's what we're going to do for the winner. And then we're going to copy this, come down here. And let's just call this one loser. And let's just copy this. And this one is going to be losses. And here too. And the rank is going to be um, loser rank losses we call losses here and then loser new score the loser new score so it's pretty good huh? uh, it has already s simplified our job now the next thing we're going to do essentially is we're going to update we're going to create a new game because we also have a game data game uh, table here so in a particular game who was the winner who was the loser we want to know that uh, we can make use of that information in the future uh, views so we're going to create a new uh, game, which is nothing very simple. Once you have winner and loser, all you have to do is, um, this is the first field, and you can use in the request if you want to. The winner and loser is already set in the request. And you can remove this, and that's it. Then you want to go, you want to return back to wherever you came from with the success message you don't have to give this notification but if you give them it, it just it looks nice you know scores updated continue applying so the scores updated continue applying and that's it man trust me this is gonna work let's go and test it save it and we're gonna do here let's see this one and boom it works let's hit quickly two three of them and then we'll go go into our database um, the workbench tool for our uh, mysql sql pro we're gonna have a look what's happening with the scores just hit couple of um, couple of games okay so at the moment as you can see wins losses rank everything is zero for all the images up to 72 images i'm going to refresh and as you can see there is one win one win one loss one loss and the rank is zero but the scores have started to change 15 12 because it has won and it has lost is also 15 12. it has won and won won one and lost one so 15 24 but all these scores at the moment they don't make much sense because the expectation that it has only played one game it's hard to calculate its expectation so let's play a few more and uh, it will start working in the future and then next thing we want to do is find our top 10 players but in this video we're trying to establish this update method the real algorithm we're going to apply in this in this uh, video and once this is working everything else is just query just query top 10 players based upon the ranks 
and display them here top six sorry and then view statistics you can go to view statistics right now and you can start looking at which images we have clicked for example this one has lost and won uh, but the rank hasn't been established the reason rank hasn't been established because it has won against an image that has no it depends on the opponent as well if you go go back and look here the expectation takes into consideration the opponent as well as the one that was winner and the loser both score and then it updates this the score so based on the current rating of the opponent and the player the algorithm works without further ado let's hit some of them randomly I don't really care like which one is which one but um, um, if you use Chrome you will have exact same view the size of the image and everything because I think I did the CSS for exact same um, browser another thing you can do is you want to remove this bit of padding here just go to the game blight and uh, all you have to do essentially is basically um, there's a class in my uh, CSS and you wouldn't know otherwise you know you all you have to do is basically create a class with a with a, with padding is zero so all you have to do is add a class here no pad and that's going to take off the the padding on on the left and right side I think and then same is probably here no pad it's I just call it no pad but of course um, if you open all dot CSS and try to look for uh, no pad you'll see here padding left is zero padding right is zero and these are all the helper classes you can make use of someday if you want to um, for example you want to use background white is BG white BG off white I wrote them one day like I spent a couple of hours I wrote all these colors all these rules Z index 100 minus 100 150 so I can use them in any project I do C margin top 10 15 20 25 35 you know I can just quickly use them in my because every time I do a project sometimes I need a margin top 70 pixels sometimes I need 10 pixels sometimes I need bottom margin sometimes I need padding top right I just create all of them so all I have to do is based upon the look use it and I don't need to worry about the CSS I mean it, it just makes my project so much um, so I'm gonna I don't need to refresh if you if you submit this I hope it refreshes and it does so there's no padding as you can see it's just lined up uh, edge to edge so um, you can benefit from the helpers.css it's all been compiled into all.css if you want separately just uh, send me a message or post a comment I'll, I'll upload on the github only the helpers.css that way you can compile that using gulp and you can use it in any project you do it's about I think how many lines I forgot maybe about uh, 200 300 or, or 800 lines of uh, CSS which is which can be used but you still have to go through each of those classes so you can you remember what to type you know the name of the class and what is account and what the rules are there inside the class so stuff like that actually we don't need to go database we can see the rank here it's going to pull out did we did we yeah yeah we set up that one so we keep clicking as you can see the previous one had a rank um, I just clicked so too quickly keep clicking and one of the images will come across that has a rank and then we'll go into database to have a look or we can go now if you want just uh, a few more clicks okay it's not working it's taking time so here I'm going to refresh uh, refresh now it has a rank of 768 and score is same it has a rank of 768 as well and 768 again 769 780 768 so maybe there is something wrong it rings bells um, what is wrong here we need to open up side by side let's let's open up this is called building an application this is really the real real shit that the programmers do everything else is just um, anyone can do that 
So do you see some problem? I do see, I don't see problem right now, but uh, so the winner's expected score is going to be um, loser's current score and winner's current score which is correct and this is going to be opposite the the problem the problem is that um, loser score and then loser's expected score and then loser's rank is going to be the new lose, new score and loser's losses and loser's wins and we are updating loser's new score and losses which is coming from here and then the rank so you see what the problem is instead of passing here loser losses we need to pass this variable because when a loser has lost a game the current value is going to be this value however when we say loser losses is the value that comes from the database so it's one less than that so I guess if we just change it to losses so sometimes uh, this kind of things can really really and then because it's a loser it losses have gone up but the wins are still the same so we, this one we can keep the same and here we can call it this variable the wins because the current number of wins is going in the database right but it hasn't gone yet and the database value is going to be one less and let's go ahead and play our game a little bit longer this time because these these values were wrong but you get the idea how to run a, I mean, we are not really um, someone is no one is paying us to fix this you know we're just having fun we're just having how to make a functional prototype and of course once you have the functional prototype you can play with the very uh, with the algorithm you can you have your uh, abstraction that the algorithm the, the business logic is abstracted from your application you can change it your application will continue to work so you get the idea and uh, just a little bit of mathematics just a little bit of understanding and a little, little bit of common sense and when you when you s study these results and if you see they are coming pretty close you know they are not really um, like they're not you're not able to differentiate them the purpose of ranking is to be able to differentiate which one is better than the other and it requires maybe a bit maybe 100 200 clicks or 300 clicks depending on how many images you have and then no two ranks should be same that's the whole idea right you can use a uh, 600 points basis and you can use a higher constant value like 32 that may give you a better ranking if you want to play less number of games but if you want to play long large number of games eventually it will all improve you know it will all come down to as you can see every single picture we click has some kind of rank now so it's picking up and there was that problem we fixed remember so we need to give it the the current number of wins and current number of losses um, it's good that we could find the problem just a little of you have to think sometimes what is wrong and usually when I go over the code that I wrote the first time usually when I go over it second time I try to look at it reverse I try to look at it in a different way if I look at it same way the way I wrote it first line second line third line I can never catch the error try to jump jump to first line then third line just try to make some logic out of something else think the opposite of that what why did you write this it's opposite and then you you come across Oh, I see what you mean, what you're trying to do, okay. But anyway, um, application seems to work. Most of the images have ranks. Let's go back to the database for a second and refresh. And uh, this is good. This is working. So I can see that it has 508, 619. Again, we have 508. 
you have 516, 516 because the score is same because it hasn't played a large number of games. Once you play like 200 and 300 losses, 200 wins, you know. It, but then again, I'm not sure if this is going to be, if this is 200 and 300, what it's going to be. Because what happens here is, this is essentially, it's, it's, it's different. If you ask me, they are actually different scores. But we are, right, we are rounding off. Um, the difference is in decimals. But we can't see that right now because we are rounding off to the nearest uh, digit. Because they take into consideration open end score when they, ca they calculate the expectation. But it's always going to be in decimal because it's very small, you know. And it's only a fraction of difference. And then because we are rounding off, they all come pretty close to each other. But as you can see, it's building up. It's building up all sorts of ranking. So you keep playing. Hopefully that fraction will start making some difference. But if we, for, for a second, if we go here and if we go to our model here and we, we don't round off this thing, just these things, the wins, and we don't do that. And then also the score we can run, the rank we can round off, but these uh, equations we don't round off, okay? If you do that, and does it give us similar results or it gives us different because the thing is, um, I rounded it off before storing in the database. Why I did that, I didn't want to store decimal values because I created integer column, big integer or something. But essentially, maybe it's going to help in, predict in calculation, calculation of the ranks because they, these values, essentially, they don't get stored anyway. Why would I round it off? Because I'm not storing them anyway. I don't store them in the database. Do you understand what I mean? These values will be used to calculate the new score which will be rounded off and stored in the database but actually these um, I don't know um, you get the idea you 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 could build the application so game controller has this error because I didn't save that last time I, number 21 what is the error here the error is here because I think I removed by mistake is it There are three brackets, and I, I haven't. I hope so. And now it has unexpected. So yeah, I mean, you get the idea, man. It's just um, score this, this, this. I think I didn't, I deleted by mistake the end of the, um, this, the, uh, what do you call that, to the, the brackets. Sometimes uh, when I'm trying to talk to you guys, I forget other things like my own code. But when I'm coding, I focus on the code. I don't really, then these mistakes uh, happen not so frequently. But as long as we can fix the mistakes, we can keep working, you know. So never give up, just keep trying. And it seems to be improving now, does it? Let's go back and refresh. So we have still have similar scores because these images didn't get a chance to play. But as you can see, the score is 15, 24, and 25. It's slightly different because we don't need to round off. I think we better don't do that. Let the MySQL round off itself when it goes in the database. And they have similar scores and rank because we rounded off ourselves. If I don't round off, maybe it's going to come out better as well. So why don't we just remove this as well temporarily and see if if um, it gives us better results. Sorry about that. Rounding off I thought will help us, but instead we don't need to round off. So this is good and I like it. And if you want, you can keep it or you can improve it. In the next video we'll work on displaying top six images here. And that will be 80% of our series will be complete. The next thing we want to do is only create a share button where you can. That's pretty simple. All it does is uses the mail 
facade or, or the male functionality of built-in functionality of Laravel so you give one email address two three four five six by clicking plus which will create dynamically the forms using jQuery and then all of them get uh, added to an array which will be the let's say email addresses name variable uh, input name array and then that goes with the request and the mail will send the mail to them with a token and when they click because there's no authentication so we don't need the token but token can be used if you want to make sure the user which user is coming so you, against the user ID you can store that token so when they click which user they don't have to log in but you know which user is playing currently but if you don't want to use authentication like I did you don't need tokens in that way and anyone who receives the link is going to come come here and just play that's all it is but we'll create that because I promise so I'll do that let's go to view statics instead of going to stat, uh, database so it has a rank of 763 so I, I suppose if after doing that after removing that round I haven't played but if I play and uh, the round will improve and uh, instead of so many images you can use two three images and maybe you can see results quickly because those images will be played against each other over and over like you can use 10 images and then go here so 620 680 1025 719 485 yeah there is there's a variation you know you can see they like they are like um, unique numbers they are not really same and what about if I go to database here so 485 388 so this looks better you know I didn't find in the top first top 10 20 records only this one because this one we haven't clicked yet once we click it if it will it will change because we are not running rounding off the values now don't round off I think let MySQL choose upper and lower values the PHP round off probably does one directional doesn't matter it whatever it is it just rounds off to the lowest or the highest I don't know but that's okay MySQL makes a logic if it's over five you know dot five or five or over it'll increase otherwise it'll, it'll reduce so maybe that's better so that, that's the end of the video in this video we managed to apply the algorithm and managed to get the response from the from the game view and managed to update our database in the next view in the next video we'll create to, uh, a div here which will display an on order list of top six players and then when we play the game they will change dynamically so that's all for now have a nice day and i'll see you soon